This video is going to drum, demonstrate to the student the principles of in, instrumentation. There are 11 major things that you need to know about the cassette in front of you. You were provided with two cassettes at the orientation in August. Both cassettes have the same number of instruments and the same type of instruments in each cassette. One cassette is made of the EverEdge and the other one is made of the resin set. The EverEdge cassette is one in which you have a metal handle and that is the EverEdge and this is what the cassette you have that is shown in front of you. You also have a second cassette which has the same instruments, same type, same number, but the handle is different and it's a resin. The reason why we give you two different kinds of cassettes is for the mere fact of uh, clinician preference. And to best give you an analogy of that is as we begin to write on paper, take notes, um, communicate in any kind of written format, we end up selecting pens and pencils that fits best in our hands, that writes it the way that we prefer it because it feels comfortable. As a clinician in, in private practice and as a clinician here in our clinic is that we want you to develop a preference as to what do you prefer to use as an instrument cassette. You will use both, but as you go into private practice and you have the option to select and purchase instruments, you'll pick those instruments based on whether it will be an EverEdge or whether it's going to be a resin cassette. Each cassette, whether it be the resin handle one or the, the EverEdge, is the cassette is set up in a particular order. The first four instruments, which, which consists of the Mirror, the 1723 Explorer, the 1112 Explorer, and the Probe, are known as your assessment instruments. Some of you may have read that it's also known as examination instruments, and if you have experience in a dental office, your office might call these same four instruments as part of a basic setup. The remaining instruments that you have, which are seven, the H67, the 1-2, the 7-8, the 204S, the 11-12, Curette, the 1314 Curette, and the Bardenhard 5-6 are what we know those instruments to be called as treatment instruments. The left side of our cassette is set up so that we have our examination or our assessment instruments followed by the anterior instruments that we're going to use. On the right side of the cassette, all of the instruments that are here are those instruments that are designed specifically uh, for the posterior teeth. We set it up in this fashion so that you know if we call out a, an anterior tooth or you're going to scale an anterior tooth, you will always find those instruments on the left side of the cassette. If you are scaling the instruments or learning the instruments, you know that all per posterior instruments are going to be on the left side of the curette, on the left side of the cassette. We set that up for a couple different reasons. Number one, we want to train you to pick up the instrument where you know it's going to be and place it back down in the same spot. As a dentist in private practice will come in and pick up your instruments and do an exam or check something else specifically, they will also know how you have your instrument cassette set up so that they can put the instrument back in the same spot in which it was found. As our clinic rotations, you will have examinations done by both the dentist and hygienist. So there's a variety of different uh, clinicians that will be utilizing your instruments as they check your patients doing patient care services. So we will also be trained the same way to, to know where to find the anterior instruments, the posterior instruments, and the assessment instruments. And we will hopefully put them back in the same spot in which they were originally um, placed. The next step is the parts of the instrument, and it's divided into three main parts. And each instrument has that. It is the handle. First part is the handle the shank, and then the working end. Every cassette has the instruments that all contain those three parts, the handle, the shank, and the working end. Some of the instruments in the cassette are designed as single-ended instruments, as paired or unpaired. A single-ended instrument is going to be like the mirror. We know it has a handle, pointed out the shank, and pointed out the mirror, the mirror which is the working end. But there is no other um, uh, working end on the opposite end, so 
this is what we call a single-ended instrument, that the working end and shank only belongs on one end and not the other. We will have instruments in your cassette which are called unpaired, and an example of this is the 1723 Explorer. It has a handle, it has a shank on either end, but what's different is, is that you have the instrument tip is different, the working end. One has a 17 and the other end has the 23. And I'm going to just put this little sh shade up here so it's hopefully a little bit easier. So one end happens to be a shepherd's hook and the other opposite end is the 17. And that instrument's ends are designed for specific reasons that we'll go through later on in this video. The rest of your instruments, um, your treatment instruments, are all what we have picked out is called a paired instrument. A paired instrument means just the opposite of the unpaired. This means that both instrument ends are exactly the same. They have a handle, they both have a, a shank on both ends, but the working end is exactly the same. It's identical so that you are able to use this in the mouth on the facial and the lingual surfaces by having a paired instrument. You can also have an unpaired instrument where you have a scaler at one end and a curette on another. The, the companies do manufacture them that way. Every instrument that you have in your cassette has a shank and it's either a simple or a complex. Simple shanks are straight and are used for anterior teeth whereas complex shanks are curved and are used for posterior teeth to get around those instruments. And I'm going to illustrate that right now. The instrument that I have in my hand is the H67. It has a handle. We have a shank that is straight and then has the working end. It doesn't matter which way, whether you have the tip toward, uh, pointed towards you or away. But what's, what's the, important to know here is that the shank is straight. That means this instrument specifically is going to be used in the anterior portion of the mouth. Another instrument I'm going to select is a posterior instrument. Again, this instrument has what we know to be a, the handle. It has a shank but, and then it has a working end, but the shank, is, as I turn it and twist it so that you can see, it has multiple bends in the shank. Therefore, this instrument is a complex shank, therefore primarily used in your posterior teeth. Each one of these um, shanks, whether it be simple or complex, have two divisions. It's known as a functional shank or a lower shank. The lower shank is sometimes called a terminal shank. The definition of a functional shank is that it's the last bend in the handle, the last bend in the shank that is closest to the handle, whereas the lower shank is the last bend closest to the working end, to the working end happens to be the lower shank. And I'm going to, to illustrate that first with, with an easier instrument, and that happens to be the 1314. The 1314 is an instrument that has a shank that is curved and has multiple bends and that's called the complex shank. So the last bend in the instrument happens to be right here. So right at this juncture here, which is closest to the handle, starts the functional shank and it goes from, the, from that last bend all the way down to the working end. Then from that functional shank, you're going to locate the terminal shank. That terminal shank happens to be the last bend in the instrument that's closest to the working end and that is that section between that last bend to the working end is the lower shank or the terminal shank. Very easy to find on your 1314. The lower shank happens to be the area that's critical from here this last bend closest to the working end to the working end comes into play when we go to, in, to sharpen the instruments. The shank of an anterior instrument, which is a little harder because this, the shank is, is already straight, it, it may not appear as, as that it has much of a bend in the shank, but it goes right above the bend to the bend in the instrument, 
this um, the function I'm sorry the functional shank goes from slightly above the bend in the in the shank all the way down to the working end and then the working end um, the lower shank goes from the bend of the instrument closest to the working end is the terminal shank or the lower shank a little easier to find in a complex than it is a straight shank the next thing that you I'm going to introduce is the working of, of, of the working end of each one of the instruments. If you have a scaler, which is, I'm going to go back to your H67. Your H67 consists of, of several parts that you need to know for each instrument. The working end, which we know is, goes from approximately from the end, and it has slightly different color. It's a little bit more, has a satin finish versus a shinier finish with the shank. And it goes from here to the, to the tip of the instrument. This H67 has a face, it has a back, two lateral um, surfaces, it has a tip, it has a, two cutting edges, one on either side, and that is the, the components of the working end of a scaler. The components of a curette, which I'm going to go back to the 1314, is that we already know that it consists of a face, a back, two lateral surfaces but only one cutting edge and as the instrument um, blade is pointed directly at you one size this size is lower than the other and the cutting edge is always on the lower um, cutting edge and that's the junction between the face and the lateral surface all curettes have toes for all curettes and I'm just going to illustrate both of those concepts on a much larger version of the H67 and the 1314. So as I'm going to show you here is that you're going to take a look at the working end which starts from here to here and it has somewhat of a brushed um, finish versus the on the lateral surfaces to uh, distinguish between where the working end starts and where it ends. So on this big illustrated form is that the face of it here is very brushed that's the face, the back is directly below it. If you turn it on its side, it's much wider. That happens to be the lateral surface. Also has the same one here on the lateral surface there. And then it ha comes to a tip. All scalers have tips, all curettes have toes. All scalers are used super gingerly. All curettes are used both supra and sub. On the 1314 instrument, the big illustrated one, it has the same components. It has a face, which is a brushed kind of, of, of a nickel, and then it has a back. It has a lateral surface and a second lateral surface, but one is lower than the other. The lower end, which happens to be on this side, happens to be where the cutting edge is. The cutting edge is formed by the face and by the lateral surface. It has a toe, and any instrument has a toe is used both supra and sub. The next thing you're going to do, and this will be part of your competency in addition to the things I've already explained, is that you're going to identify the following characteristics of each instrument. You're going to identify the name, whether, whether it's an H67 or it's a 1314, the type of instrument, is it a scaler or is it a curette? You're going to identify the three parts of the instrument, meaning the, the handle, the shank, and the working end. You're going to identify whether the shank is simple or whether it's complex, followed by whether where the functional shank is and the lower shank. Next, then you're going to identify the parts of the, of the working end to include the face, the back, the lateral surfaces, how many cutting edge, edges that instrument has, and whether it is, has a tip or a toe. Then you will state to us whether um, the instrument is used supra, sub, or is it used both supra and sub. And then you're going to identify which tooth surfaces each instrument is designed to work on. And that's what I'm going to begin with with H67.
the H67. The name of the instrument is the H67. It's a scaler. The parts of the instrument are the handle, the shank, and the working end, and it has the same on the opposite end. The shank happens to be a simple shank because it's straight. And then I'm going to identify where the functional shank is, which is approximately right above the bend, which is closest to the handle, and it goes from there all the way down to the working end. And then the, the uh, lower shank, or the terminal shank, is that portion of the functional shank that is the bend that's closest to the working end, and this will help when we go to uh, sharpen the instruments. This instrument here is used super gingerly and it's used on anterior surfaces. The next instrument is the 1-2 Explorer. And the, or one, I'm sorry, the 1-2 Curette. You will identify the name, which is the H, uh, is the SG-1-2. It is a Curette. It's divided into a handle, the shank, and the working end. The shank, as I turn it this way, it's, it's a simple shank, it's straight. The functional part, we're gonna take, turn the instrument on its side, it has two bends. You have one here, and you have one here. So the functional shank goes from the last bend, closest to the angle, all the way down to the working end. And then the terminal shank, or lower shank, goes from the, the bend closest to the working end, to the working end. So this is the, the uh, lower shank. The parts of the working end has the face, it has a back, and it has two lateral, cut, uh, lateral surfaces. Only one of the surfaces, which is the lower cutting edge, contains one blade. It has a toe. This instrument is used both supra and sub, and it's used around all anterior teeth, all surfaces. The next instrument is your 7-8. It is a curette. The parts of the instrument is the handle, the shank, the working end. This is a simple shank because it's straight. And turning it on the side, you have two bends. The functional shank goes from the, the bend closest to the handle all the way down to the working end. The functional shank goes from the last bend or the bend closest to the, the working end to the working end. The working end has a face, it has a back, two lateral surfaces. One lateral surface has the cutting edge, whichever is the lowest on the, the cutting edge is on the lower side of the, of the lateral, lowest of the two lateral sides. It has a toe. This is used supra and sub, and this can be used on all anterior teeth, all surfaces, plus the buccal and lingual surfaces of your posterior teeth. The next instrument is your 204S scaler. It is a, uh, in, the instrument is divided into the handle, the shank, and the working end. The shank is complex because it has more than one bend. And so the, the bend closest to the handle starts the functional area and it works all the way it, itself down to the working end. The, uh, lower shank or the, fun or the um, terminal shank is from the bend closest to the working end to the working end. This instrument here has a face. It has two lateral surfaces. It has a back. It has two cutting edges because it's a scalar because all scalars have two cutting edges and it has a tip. This instrument is used on your posterior teeth, on your um, interproximal surfaces, which is your mesial and your distal surface. The next instrument happens to be uh, your 1112 curette. It is an instrument that's divided into the handle, the shank, and the working end. This shank is complex because there's multiple bends in here. The functional part starts at the last bend, going towards the closest to the handle, all the way to the working end. The terminal shank happens to be the last bend that's closest to, or the first bend closest to the working end. That's your lower shank, or also known as your terminal shank. 
The working end has a face, it has a back, it has two lateral surfaces. One of the lateral surfaces has the cutting edge. The cutting edge again is formed by the face and the lateral surface. And this instrument has a toe. It's used for all, um, it's used supra and sub, and it's used on the mesial, the facial, and the lingual surfaces of your posterior teeth. Your 1314 curette is divided into your handle, your shank, your working end. This is a complex shank because it has multiple curves and that bend closest to the handle is starts the functional shank and it goes all the way down to the working end. The last, the, the last bend closest to the working end or the first bend closest to the working end is the lower shank or the terminal shank. It consists of a face, a back, two lateral surfaces, but there's one lateral surface that's lower than the other and that contains the cutting edge and there's only one cutting edge on all curettes. It has a toe. This particular instrument is used both supra and sub and on the distal surfaces of your posterior teeth. The last instrument is your universal. It is a it's a Barnhard 5-6. It is a curette. It has the handle, the shank, and the working end. The shank is complex because there's multiple bends in the shank. And the shank, the bend closest to the handle starts the functional shank and it goes all the way down to the working end of this particular instrument, uh, the universal. Then the, the first bend that's closest to the working end or the last bend in the, in the shank is considered the lower shank or the terminal shank. The, the instrument working end has a face, a back, two lateral surfaces. One lateral surface is lower than the other. The one that's lower is, ha, contains the cutting edge because there's only one cutting edge on most curettes with the exception of the Barnhard 5-6. There, the cutting edges are located on both lateral surfaces and it has a toe. The universal curette is used supra and sub, and it's used all surfaces, all anteriors, all posterior teeth. The last thing that you're going to be able to demonstrate is to show us how to um, hold the instrument in a modified pen grasp. So you'll use your H67. You will place your, your fulcrum finger, hold it with your three fingers, and your index finger, your middle finger, and your thumb. You will place your ring finger on, the, on an instrument or on a tooth and you're going to demonstrate to us how to roll the instruments in your fingers, pivot using your fulcrum finger, and then you're going to show us angulation. You're going to first place that instrument at a 90 degree angle, only placing the terminal one third of that instrument in contact with the instrument or the tooth, and then you're going to tip that instrument 60 to 80 degrees and begin to pull up on an upward motion to try to engage the cutting edge that is on this particular instrument, which is on all instruments. And that concludes the exercise on the principles of instrumentation.